I got first place at my local OTS store tournament using Phantom Knights. Hey guys, it's me Cam, and in this video we're going to be talking about how I got first place during the recent tournament that I had and go over the matches that happened. But first, I just want to make a quick announcement that we are doing a giveaway, so stick around until the end to figure out how to participate in that. Uh, super excited to share this video with you guys, it was a lot of fun to make. Without further ado, let's just not waste any time, let's get started. The Phantom Knight's deck strategy is the first deck that I ever played since getting back into the game. With its excellent ability to utilize its resources in the grave and play around tough situations that may arise in complicated game states, this deck is certainly not a force to be reckoned with. It's been a couple months since I picked this deck back up, so I needed to get some extra practice in first. The day prior, I played with a small gathering at Outer Plains to get back in the groove of the deck, and I finished in third place. And with that placement, I got some sick prizes. You got is five. <laughs> $5, no way! Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I'll give you also something else. Oh, <gasps> yay! Oh, Alright, I'm getting demonetized, baby. <laughs> Let's go, booby. <laughs> so the next day, I decided to compete at a higher stakes local tournament and see if I really had what it takes to top. It's me, Cam, and I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Again! I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Today we're at uh, Waifu Next Door Collectibles in Santa Rosa. It's like a brand new shop that opened up. It's newly certified as an OTS store. Uh, today's the first day that uh, we're able to get packs for uh, tournament entry. The owner, Jai, he's the owner of this place. He's a longtime Yu-Gi-Oh player and uh, an avid uh, member of the community. It's an amazing opportunity to be able to play here and uh, support local Yu-Gi-Oh enthusiasts like Jai. That's Jai. What's poppin' playboy? <laughs> he's cool, he's a swell guy. Anyway, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, let's go check out the inside and uh, we'll go get started. Waifu Next Door Collectibles is a newer shop that just opened up in Santa Rosa. Tournaments usually take place late at night and end at around 1 in the morning. Normally entry fees are $5 and the prize pool is split amongst the top 3 players at other OTS stores. But when it comes to tournaments at this store, everything is double. Double entry fee, double the prize pool, and double the OTS packs. And speaking of OTS packs, we opened a lot of them that night. And pulled not one. Bro! <laughs> not two. Oh, not three. Oh yeah, I got two. Dang. Ooh, you didn't have to be. Oh, 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 what? Four oh, old teams? Oh, hello? Big girl, man. But four ultimate rares amongst the people that showed up tonight. First round against David. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, I am. Do you consent? <laughs> For 2% of all premises. <laughs> all right, that sounds, that sounds good to me. First round, we get paired against David, and David is just the nicest guy. Like, I love when this guy comes to play. He's a little bit of a newer player, so I won't cover too much, uh, aside from the key moments where we end up making mistakes. And I'll end up showing you guys later what full combo looks like with this deck uh, in a different match. Uh, but he's playing Sword Soul Tenyi. He ends up making a Roar Dawn off of Halky Fibrax and Dust Spot 001 and activates the effect which summons out three tokens to his side of the field, but then passes turn unfortunately after uh, and forgets about uh, Death Spot's graveyard effect to special summon itself from the grave. So he's pretty much wide open and I'm able to dismantle the whole board and win shortly after. Game 2, we're in a relatively interesting spot here where David goes first this time and he's able to bring out Xi Zhao, which is able to negate a monster effect, as well as Cheng Ying, which is able to make my monsters lose attack power based on the total number of banished monsters from both players. He also sets two cards face down, and I'm in a situation next turn where I'm able to bounce a card back to his hand using Dracobek's ability. And after thinking about it, I end up bouncing one of his back row with that face down. This guy? Yes. And then I end up summoning out Rusty Bardish and try to use its effect, but when David tries to negate it with Shi Zhao, I respond by chaining Griffin Rider to negate Shi Zhao. And then David changed Griffin's activation by activating Forbidden Chalice as his other phase done to negate Griffin's effect. So now David doesn't have any spells or traps, and his monster negate off of Xi Zhao is gone. Think about going into DPE because I'm thinking about popping Cheng Ying with uh, DPE's effect, and then just attacking over Xi Zhao normally once Cheng Ying is off the field and is no longer making my monsters lose attack points. But uh, unfortunately for me, I forget about Cheng Ying's second ability, which allows him to banish a card from the graveyard if it would be destroyed by card effect. So my plan pretty much just fails from here. Um, I probably, in hindsight, should have just bounced the Cheng Ying to begin with, with Dracoback, and um, 
just had not have been scared of the two face downs. He ends up normal summoning Mo Yi the next turn. I just end up scooping and try to move to game three as quickly as possible because the time is starting to run out soon. Game three, I open with just the Brave Package as well as being able to activate Fusion Destiny from hand. And I also set and activate an anti-spell fragrance the next turn to try and stall out David from using any spells, to which he then chains Forbidden Chalice, targeting DPE to negate its effects. I chain Griffin Rider to negate this, and then he summons out Moe, and after he summons out the token, I quick effect DPE, destroy the Moe, and leave David wide open with just the one token. So the, by this point, there's like one minute left in the round, I'm struggling to perform my combo as quickly as possible in order to try and win. But then he activates Nibiru, and I'm like, oh shit, what have I done? Like, I should have just attacked and at least, at least do some damage before time runs out, but uh, I'm able to save myself by linking off the token and summoning out some of my monsters from Graves using Seer's effect, as well as bringing back Torn Scales from Grave in order to make Axis Code Talker, and then attack for game. Even though time was called shortly after Nibiru was activated, David was really nice and let me finish my combo and allowed me to take the first win. Uh, he would later go on and tell me that he came to the decision to give me the win because he is a newer player and he acknowledges it. He was acknowledging that he was taking a while to finish his turns, and he also made a judgment decision that the game was in my favor anyway, and I would have been able to win in the next turn or so anyway. Uh, I'm not really one to be bothered for people playing at a slower pace because, you know, like we've all been there, especially me. So I wasn't gonna say anything about the game going into time for that reason, and I would have just taken the draw if David wanted, but the dude was really chill about the situation, and he just gave me the win under the circumstances, and I really respect him for doing that. Um, it was really fun to play against David, but now, I'm about to have a lot less fun, because <laughs> next round we got paired against Kevin, who's playing pure branded Despia. This is... What is this? <laughs> Sorry. This is like, just your revenge arc right now, from the last time. I mean, I wish I had this <laughs> board with him. So I open up pretty subpar after losing the dice roll, and Kevin is able to just get out this disgusting board, like, oh my god, without any interruptions. And, uh, remember that annoying Masquerade Dragon from the last video? The one that deals 600 damage to me every time I do something? Yeah, he has two of those on the field, plus a Griffin Omni Negate. And I look at my hand, and despite Kevin's nasty-ass board that he got set up, I decided to play this game the best way I know how. <laughs> dude, what? I'm just gonna scoop, dude. I like. I will just either burn to death or like, or just get or just or just get negated. <laughs> and that's by not playing at all. We scoop and move to game two. All right, game two. We're going first this time. Thank God, because this deck always goes better going first. Uh, we play foolish barrel to try to get as many cards as we can into the grave start, but uh, Kevin ends up going ahead and using Ash Blossom on us, uh, which is okay because we do have extenders. Uh, we're able to send out uh, Fateful Venture and then Silent Boots and then activate Fateful Venture's effect to get Draco back to hand and then activate Fateful Venture to get the Water Enchantress and banish that to get the token. We end up using Emergency Teleport to get our second level 3 monster onto the field. And with that, we're able to link them off into Cherubini. Cherubini is a monster that is able to dump a level 3 to the grave and then boost its attack. So by sending Graph to the grave, but we can activate its effect to send out Seer. And then Seer and Cherubini can then link off into Rusty Bardiche, one of the best cards in the deck. Seer activates in grave when it's sent to bring back out Cherubini. I end up linking off the token to get uh, Link Spider and then link off the two for Dagda, and then I chain one Rusty, chain two Dagda in order to set my Scythe, and send a Torn Scales, and then set a Fog Blade. So I've got some good options in the grave. So I'm able to banish the boots to grab a Fog Blade, and when a Phantom Heads card is banished, I can bring back my Torn Scales from the grave, and then I end up sending both my monsters to the grave to get out Verte and activate Verte uh, to get out DPE. So now I've got my Scythe I can destroy on the next turn and Scythe lock Kevin and I have two fog blades just for safe measure. Is it like a turn? No, I will change off can't put monster. Emotional damage! Oh my god, it's over. He activates Twisters to destroy two of my Fog Blades and then Chains Droplet, sending Twister and another monster from hand to negate DPE. So I can't chain DPE and I can't activate anything. So now I just have the Scythe sitting there and my monsters can't do anything. He's able to normal summon Alibur, get the Branded Fusion, and then bring out Albion as well as Masquerade. Um, and at this point, I'm just like, oh my god, I've lost, it's, I'm not getting first place. This video is clickbait, you guys, I didn't get first place. He destroys my monsters. And then at this point, I'm just like, oh man, it's over. But then, 
my scythe comes back, because it was supposed to be destroyed at the end off of Dagda's effect, and then I attack him next turn and destroy his monsters because they're negged 400 attack off of DPE's effect, and then I activate Fogblade in the grave and bring back my Rusty, and then in end phase, Kevin ends up searching to set a branded spell or trap, to which I then chain DPE because I didn't use the effect that turn to destroy it immediately, so the next turn he's not able to do anything and then I'm able to just one-shot him. So I don't know how I won, but I... But I won. I don't. I don't know, man. All right, guys. We're in game three now, and Kevin chooses to go first this time. He sets up a board with the Griffin Omni Negate, Mirror Jade, as well as a Face Down. I start by bringing out my two level three monsters to make Cherubini, and then after using its effect to send a level three monster to the grave, Kevin chains Griffin Rider to negate and destroy my Cherubini. But thankfully, Cherubini mills a monster as cost, so I'm able to still put my Water Enchantress in the grave, and then banish it to get my Rite of Aramisir, and then I activate Rite of Aramisir, and chain Griffin to special summon it from hand, in order to avoid Kevin from banishing my token with Mirror Jade right as it hits the field. He later then activates Mirror Jade to banish one of my cards, to which I chain Griffin to negate, and then he chains Branded in Red in order to fusion summon Garden Chimera, to which I'm able to then chain Ash Blossom, which I held onto in case this might happen so that Kevin is unable to draw cards, as well as destroy one of my monsters. And with Kevin having no cards in his hand and no spells or traps on the field, I'm able to activate Torn Scales and send Ancient Cloak from my hand to the grave in order to send a Fog Blade from my deck to grave and Xyz summon out Phantom Knights of Breaksword. I activate its effect to destroy itself as well as one other card on the field. I choose Guardian Chimera to get destroyed and then activate Breaksword's effect in grave, which summons out two Phantom Knights monsters from the grave and then makes them level 4 and then I exit the two level 4 monsters into Raider's Knight, and then activate Raider's Knight's effect to summon out Arc of Rebellion and Dragon. And to finish things off, I activate Fogblade and Grave to revive back my Breaksword, and since Kevin used Verte the first turn and took the 2000 damage off of its effect to fusion summon Mirror Jade, I am able to attack with enough damage to secure a win for the second round. Alright, now it's time for the gift. I'm going to be giving away this secret rare Metal Zoa from... That set right there. All you have to do is uh, be subscribed and leave a like and comment down below what your favorite part of the video is so far. I'm trying to do a giveaway every video, so uh, if you guys feel like participating, just leave a comment. I'll announce the winner in the next video, um, and uh, we'll just keep doing vi giveaways just because uh, I think it's fun. So um, click down below to enter the giveaway. Uh, let's get back to the video. This is my ultimate challenge. Facing Frank next against his undefeated uh, Branded Tri Brigade. Round three, we get paired against Frank. He's playing a Branded Tri Brigade deck that he went undefeated with the day prior, so I plan to tread as lightly as I can while making as little mistakes as possible, because uh, this deck's a little terrifying, but uh, not impossible to beat. He sets his board up by getting Mirror Jade and setting three cards face down. Uh, in my turn, I summon out Cherubini, and then when I use the effect, he activates Tri Brigade Revolt, which lets him summon out monsters from Grave or Banished, and then immediately link summon using those monsters. So he link summons into Shurig, and activates the effect to banish my Cherubini when Shurig is summoned. Thankfully, I am able to once again send the Water Enchantress for cost, and banish it to get my Brave Engine set up, and then activate Fusion Destiny from hand. I then activate Draco back to bounce his Mirror Jade, but then Frank chains Droplet and sends Mirror Jade, and negates my DPE. This was an interesting play, and I suppose I'm unable to do anything else I can't destroy a sure egg, but what Frank doesn't know is that I drew the scythe in my opening hand, and I end up setting it, and then next turn I surprise him by scythe locking him, preventing him from summoning any monsters from the extra deck for one turn. So Frank sets a card, which I then just destroy next turn, and then I summon out enough beatdown in order to take the victory for this first game. Second game, we draw a great starting hand, and since Frank lost the last round, he decides to lead things off. And by leading things off, I mean he just exclaims that he bricked really hard, unfortunately. Which is good to hear, I suppose. Even if he did have a decent starting hand, I had Lancia, which basically prevents the opponent from banishing. And since a lot of cards in Frank's deck banish cards in order to activate effects, it would just completely shut down any combos that he might want to perform. Uh, he just goes ahead and sets two cards and passes turn. So in my main phase, Frank activates Anti-Spell Fragrance, to which I chain Griffin to special summon itself, to which Frank then chains Gamma from hand to negate and destroy Griffin. I don't end up being too bothered by this, as I'm just able to kind of send out my Torn Scales and activate the effect to mill Ancient Cloak to the grave, and I'm guessing Frank was trying to limit my extensions as, as much as possible, because he then quick effect activates DD Crow to banish my Cloak, so I don't get to search for Phantom Knight's monster, 
and my fog blade is unable to revive anything in the grave. But unfortunately for him, I already had the silent boots in my hand, so I was able to just special summon out that and then go about my combo normally. And with Frank not possessing any more hand traps, we were able to set up a big enough board to secure a victory for this round. So, so far, we are undefeated, about to go to the final round. And oh my god, this final round, we are going up against the most terrifying deck. The deck that we've never seen on this channel. It's Sword Soul, again. We get paired up against Esteban for the final round, and we end up winning the die roll for once. So we end up going first, and we just go full combo, uninterrupted, and we just go ahead and just scythe lock him uh, immediately, the first game. First time kid, kid effect. Chain link 1 scythe, chain link 2 DPE. Nerve all effect. Hold on. Chain link 3 game 2. Okay. okay. <laughs> Game two, I just bricked hella hard. I draw into Token Collector, which just inflicts pain into my soul. I'm unable to get anything going as he just is able to negate all my monster summons and monster effects that I'm able to squeeze out and we just get crushed and scoop game two. Game three, the match that decides it all. And uh, I wish I could say I had a better starting hand. All I'm able to do is summon out DPE and set Dimensional Barrier next turn. I'm able to delay Esteban from summoning any synchro monsters by activating Dimensional Barrier, and then I use DPE's effect to try to destroy one of his monsters, but uh, when DPE is destroyed during the end phase of Fusion Destiny's effect, he activates Ghost Spell from hand, preventing it from reviving itself next turn. And with nothing else to defend myself and no more useful cards in my hand, the following turn Esteban is able to combo off and get all the big monsters he needs in order to win. And with that unfortunate ending to this journey, I lean back in my chair and I let out a sigh of defeat. Our winning streak had come to an end. Alright guys, okay, so here's what happened. We lost against Esteban. But... The final standings, everyone went 3-1. It was like a four-way tie. Three games won, one lost. And uh, I won to tiebreakers, so I got first place. I got first place, baby, with yeah, Phantom Knights. Super, like, super, uh, oh super proud of myself. Good job, Cam. You earned it. Yeah. So uh, I got some store credit, and uh, got the Ghost from the Past display. I will be opening that up in the next video. But uh, yeah, super satisfied. I'm very tired. I'm gonna go home. That's the end of the video, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and hitting the subscribe button if you want to support the channel. And if you're interested in participating in the giveaway, uh, just uh, leave a comment and I will select the winner next video. Huge thanks to everybody that came out that night and uh, thanks again to Jai for uh, hosting us. Look forward to making more content in the future and uh, hope you guys all have a good rest of your day.